In the beginning, there was darkness, and then bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. On Earth, liquids are all around us, even inside of us. But our world is not like others. When we look at the stars and planets of our vast cosmos, liquids are actually very rare. And when we do find liquids, they flow in strange ways on bizarre worlds. It's an environment where nothing that we can build here on Earth could withstand that for more than a fraction of a second. New discoveries are forever changing what we know about the churning, bubbling matter of our liquid universe. Liquids cover nearly 75% of the Earth's surface. We see them oozing from the ground or falling from the sky. And we manipulate them to power our cities and fuel our engines. But this is not the way of most of the rest of the universe. Liquids only make up a tiny fraction of all matter. Most of the universe consists of gas, either interstellar gas, the gas between the stars, or the gas within the stars themselves, or the atmospheres of planets. The other stuff that exists is solid material. Planets are made out of solid material, but there's really very little liquid. And it's exactly what's most rare in the universe that seems to be the most important. If there were no liquids in the universe, I actually doubt that there would be life, at least life as we know it here on Earth. Looking in the other planetary systems, there may be other forms of life that don't use liquidity, fluidity in some way, but uh, right now it's difficult to imagine how that would work. So where in the universe do we find liquids? And what does it take for them to exist at all? Only in certain special locations where the temperatures and the pressures are just right do you get liquids. And one of those special places where the conditions are just right is on Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Titan is wrapped in a thick atmosphere 50 times denser than Earth's. But underneath the hazy orange sky, dimly lit by a distant sun and dominated by a stunning view of Saturn, lakes glisten. If we had a webcam on Titan and we were just looking out on the scenery, you could think you were on Earth, unless there was a thermometer in the image and you saw that the temperature was hundreds of degrees below zero. A cruel 290 degrees below zero, to be exact. And the liquid isn't water, but rather methane. When we think about the worlds of our solar system, there's only two worlds that have liquids at their surface low-density flowing liquids that could form lakes. And that's Earth with water and Titan with methane. But how can something that's a gas on Earth be a liquid on Titan? Titan is certainly not quite Earth, and the biggest difference is really the temperature. Titan is so much further away from the sun that it receives very little energy, and that makes it a very, very cold world. And that means that the same elements that we have on the Earth behave very differently on Titan. You could imagine a scene like this on Titan, but the liquid that's lapping up on the shore is liquid methane, clear liquid, maybe a very tiny gentle breeze like the one we're feeling here today, with just tiny waves coming up. And the whitish stuff that makes the shore is water ice. It's literally frozen water, as hard as rock. So when we think of rock and water, and Titan think of water ice as the rock and liquid methane as the liquid. Clearly, at such a low temperature, liquid water turns into solid ice. But which state any type of matter takes, liquid, solid, or gas, 
has to do with how the individual molecules, its building blocks, are interacting. It's a bit like how a flock of sheep will respond differently to different conditions. These sheep can be thought of as individual atoms or molecules, like molecules of water. And just like molecules of water, they can be in different states. For example, right now, they're kind of clustered together. They're not moving around very much. They're penned in. That's like solid water, ice. In a solid, the molecules are really penned in by their nearest neighbors. They're not allowed to move much at all. When water boils and steams into a vapor, it changes phases from liquid to gas. In a gas, the constituent particles, the atoms or molecules, are all wandering around in a kind of chaotic way. And they tend to move faster if the temperature is higher. And sheep wandering around in a wide open field, free to wander every which way they want, they won't necessarily stay together. They might go off in one direction or the other. That's like a gaseous state of sheep. They're far from one another, but there's a lot of space between them. Their motions are unconstrained. But liquid, like water, is magic. It's a state of matter in limbo, somewhere between the rigid structures of a solid and the random scatter of a gas. In a liquid, the atoms or molecules are somewhat constrained by their neighbors. They might pass each other up a little bit, but they tend to flow together. When sheep are in a flock, kind of constrained by the herders and flowing along from one place to another, that can be thought of as a liquid. They can pass each other up a little bit, but they're basically not wandering too far away from their nearest neighbors. They're all going together. They're all going with the flow, so to speak. On Titan, the frigid temperatures keep methane molecules stuck together in a liquid form. They're moving like sheep in a flock. On Earth, methane is naturally a gas, with its molecules floating around like those free-ranging sheep. To transform it to a liquid, so that the methane molecules are like a flock, scientists need to squeeze them together with 300 times normal surface pressure. One of the main uses of methane on Earth is for heating and cooking. And so methane is a great source for power, whether it's heat or some kind of propulsive power. Liquid methane is such a great source of power that NASA is testing it as a potential new rocket fuel. Currently, spacecraft launch into orbit on the backs of fuel tanks filled with liquid hydrogen. Because it's lighter and denser than liquid hydrogen, launches burning methane could be cheaper. And like liquid hydrogen, liquid methane combusts readily because of the presence of oxygen. But on Titan, because the atmosphere lacks oxygen, methane isn't flammable. So Earth has nitrogen and oxygen, Titan has nitrogen and methane. And it's curious that these are the only two worlds in the solar system that have nitrogen as their dominant gas in the atmosphere. So in that sense, Titan is our sister world. Oxygen would be a dangerous explosive gas on Titan because it's surrounded by methane. The same way that methane is a dangerous explosive gas on Earth because we're surrounded by oxygen. On Titan, the liquid methane collects in pools, some as large as the Great Lakes. The lake country on Titan is the northern polar regions. Enormous number of lakes. We see one lake in the south. We don't really understand why all the lakes moved north and left one behind in the south. Why aren't there more lakes in the south? A recent discovery may have provided an important clue. In August 2009, researchers detected a sudden appearance of storm clouds around Titan's equator. This could mean that liquid methane mimics the water cycle on Earth, where water evaporates from lakes in one area and then rains to form lakes in another. In the desert landscapes of Earth, you have occasional cloud bursts where it rains very hard and the water rushes through the dry valleys. 